Now the final installment of our special report, Family Business, The Mob on Wall Street. Tonight in the conclusion of our series, Alan Dodds Frank looks at who's paying the price for the mob's increased influence on the street. This is the uh, combat infantry badge. World this War II the, veteran the, Joseph yeah, Busage has mostly fond memories of his military oh, service yeah. and of raising six children in Fairway, Kansas. But the 75-year-old is haunted by the loss of his daughter Mary to cancer five years ago and how he tried to ease her pain by investing for her. I established an account for her under my name because at the time she was down at Little Rock, Arkansas in a hospital. But Fusich, like hundreds of investors, may have been ensnared in what federal prosecutors believe was a nationwide web of stock fraud. At the center of the fraud, prosecutors say, a notorious boiler room brokerage named Myers Pollock Robbins. Prosecutors charge the brokerage joined forces with organized crime to defraud investors. Busich says a cold call from a fast-talking stock salesman from Myers Pollock Robbins prompted him to open an account. I just trusted to him because his course, in his correspondent, he signed it as senior vice president. And I thought to myself, well, if anybody knows anything, he should. But the result was a portfolio of losers. In that regard, Busich was hardly alone. Law enforcement officials who cracked down on Myers Pollock Robbins say the firm built 16,000 investors of $176 million. Myers Pollock was one of the worst firms out there, and it, it followed a very typical pattern that we observed. In, in Myers Pollock, we saw a situation where threats, bribery, and extortion was used to guarantee that brokers sold worthless stocks to unsuspecting investors. This spring, federal and state prosecutors in New York focused on Myers Pollock Robbins in three separate securities fraud indictments. The firm and its salesmen are accused of lying repeatedly to investors, selling worthless stocks, charging grossly inflated commissions, accepting bribes to manipulate stocks, and refusing to execute customer orders. Federal prosecutors also claim the firm had Brokers some well-connected help. One of the federal indictments charges that principals at Myers Pollock Robbins conspired with organized crime figures to commit stock fraud. That indictment asserts that bribes, as well as threats from mobsters, kept the firm in line as corrupt brokers manipulated small-cap stocks. One of those stocks, identified in separate federal and state indictments, was Innovative Medical Services, the California company that makes water purification systems. We weren't the cure for cancer. We were just a, a good, solid little company with a good business plan. Innovative Medical, which trades on the NASDAQ small cap market under the symbol PURE, raised nearly $5 million in an initial public offering. The lead underwriter, Myers Pollock Robin. The stock went public in the summer of 1996 at $4 a share. It immediately jumped to $7, but within a year had fallen to around $1.50. A federal indictment claims the mob used its control of a Myers Pollock Robbins office to defraud investors in the securities of Innovative Medical. Innovative Medical's chief executive says his firm is innocent and that he never suspected anything was wrong. I don't recall meeting anybody that I could identify as the mob. Uh, again, the, the contact with Myers Pollock was limited at best. Uh, we came out, did a public offering. It traded down over the next year. But uh, no contact that, I mean, uh, there was, if we were manipulated, we couldn't tell. It's sometimes there are legitimate firms that are looking for capital uh, and firms that perhaps don't have all the alternatives that, as some firms have and they get hooked up with the wrong kind of people. Uh, you don't have to be a corrupt issuer or a corrupt corporation to become involved with this kind of element. Regulators shut down Myers Pollock Robbins in 1998 after its salesman caught the attention of authorities across the country. Salt Lake City, Utah, nearly 2,000 miles from New York. It's just the sort of place penny stock salesmen target. But when salesmen from Myers Pollock Robbins began soliciting here, they definitely called the wrong number. The director of the Utah Division of Securities 
says three Myers Pollock Robbins representatives called his office, pitching stocks to a man who happened to be the division's director of licensing. They would actually cold call him right at his desk and start to, to pitch a variety of products and usually within the context of those calls they would always provide false information. Uh, they were using high pressure type boiler room tactics. Even after Utah regulators issued disciplinary orders against those cold callers, the calls kept coming. Finally, the state brought felony charges, and Myers Pollock Robbins paid fines and costs of $25,000. The firm actually encouraged people to come over who had had success in ripping off people before. They were not interested in trying to help people, help investors make money. Myers Pollock Robbins is not an isolated case. Law enforcement authorities have cracked down on organized crimes collaboration with at least a half a dozen other brokerage firms. But the FBI concedes those crackdowns have not completely driven the mob from Wall Street. The bosses uh, or the hierarchy of the mob is of the opinion if there's money to be made for us in the securities market, then we want to do it. Especially if the growth of the small cap market continues, there could be plenty of new money-making opportunities. Alan Dodds-Frank, CNN Financial News, New York.